the forest we cherish for its autumn landscapes, its wild creatures, its cool and quiet places. But there's another side to the forest. Test tubes, microscopes, slide rules are the unexpected paths the Canadian Forestry Service often pursues to explore that other side. The laboratory is a large one, all Canada. Nature, as something to manipulate, is not always the benefactor of our schemes. Meddling with nature to turn a Newfoundland bog into a forest will benefit man and nature both, it is believed. It is just one experiment being conducted by the Canadian Forestry Service among a multitude. It's a big country. Each province has its forestry service. The overall view is provided by the Federal Service, which publishes its research findings. Aerial photographs of plotted regions are collated by computer. The nationwide assessment is printed out on maps. The killers are insects, fire, and disease. And of the three, disease takes the greatest toll. But resistance to disease can be bred into trees. Manipulating nature through artificial pollination to produce a hardier, healthier stock. Great oaks from little acorns grow. True if there are no defects in the acorn. For telling the future is now possible under X-ray. Whole seed can be determined to better the chance of a hardier, healthier stock. In Victoria, a research program is underway which is repeated all across the country. One project of the Forestry Service that most Canadians know about, though not perhaps its scope nor its detail. Reforestation. One hundred forty thousand white spruce seedlings are the initial subjects of a pilot study. Artificial conditions produce not just superior trees, but superior trees that will not suffer root damage when the time comes for them to be transplanted mechanically. The dibble is a humble tool mentioned by Shakespeare, though now it's more sophisticated. And yet experiments in Victoria have shown that still further sophistication reduced the labor, but did not improve the job. In the growing rooms at Petawawa, Ontario, a plant physiologist subjects his young charges to a regimen of unusual strictness. By controlling all conditions in an experimental environment, growth can be analyzed. The metabolism of trees indicates their response to the atmosphere, what encourages growth, what deters it. Not reforestation, experimental plantations of Petawawa, where the best spacing between trees can be determined, where varieties from different provinces respond revealingly to a common climate, where measurements of age and productivity can be taken, where there is room for studies of the widest range.
the ideal interval for planting, makes optimum use of sunlight. When sunlight is used to its optimum, none will reach the forest floor to promote rival growth. The value of forests to our economy is twice that of farmland. We must learn to use them optimally. It's a big country. In places, it's a rugged country, where good timber is inaccessible, without certain ingenuity. Helicopters, balloons, hovercraft, dispense with access roads up mountains through Muskeg. But can such a costly operation be made to show a profit? That's the question. Two thousand pounds every two minutes. That's the answer. In British Columbia, the service runs a forest products lab, where the qualities of wood to be used out of doors, in poles and pilings, for example, are tested. It was rotten. Rot is the special subject of research in the Vancouver laboratory against the danger and costliness of rot. In mill and lab, research goes on, pure and applied, to benefit the forest and industries dependent on the forest. Wider use of the many virtues of wood will enhance its economic value. The ability of wood to absorb shock we have recognized, though with insufficient imagination. Laminated in plastic under polarized light, wood reveals its stress lines as readily as metal and may now be put to use in situations where the stress has been predetermined. The useful wood to be retrieved from timber is increased by new designs in cutting blades. The ages of man have been stone, bronze, iron, steel, each supplanting the other. But wood, throughout history, has shown itself to be the unsupplantable material. Wood gave man fire, shelter, weapons, and the handles for weapons and tools. Is wood now outmoded? Walk on a concrete floor, than a wooden one. Both psychological and physiological stresses are reduced by a measurable degree. Humans aren't the only beings to appreciate wood, alas, not the only destroyers of forests. The Canadian Forestry Service and the elm bark beetle are implacable enemies. 
We have captured a prisoner who is about to be interrogated. How long we want to know, and how far does it fly in a day? This is essential information. Each swing of the arm is counted as it passes through a photoelectric beam. It's a formidable bug. 20 minutes at a time it flies, six miles. In a day, nearly 20, carrying with it the fungus which causes Dutch elm disease that in North America has become epidemic. The disease itself among shade trees is the enemy in another battle being fought by the Forestry Service. A new weapon has been devised at the Sault Ste. Marie labs and it has shown encouraging results in tests. A water soluble chemical injected into the roots infiltrates the sap system. In just 20 minutes, its presence can be detected at the tops of trees. And that's where fungicides are needed to get to work on the pesky fungus. Also in the Sioux labs is what might be called the Office of False Propaganda, where entomologists have concocted sex attractants, so potential parents of destructive insects are misled in their attempts to mate. But here is the arch enemy. The egg is innocuous enough, indeed so is the spruce budworm, until it appears in hordes to devastate miles of good parkland and commercial timber at periods favorable to it. The worms have a voracious appetite for the tender new needles at the tips of branches. Defoliation is fearful in just a few spring weeks before they transform to the pupal stage. They remain that way till summer, then emerge as millions of moths who mate and deposit 10 to 30 eggs on the delectable needles of spruce forests. When the eggs hatch and the tender shoots reappear, the destruction begins again and will continue yearly unless we can stop the cycle. And we can. Chemicals with a short life are the most practical. Viral infections hold promise. Wide-range bacterial attacks were always too costly and anyway puny against the worm's tough intestinal walls until an extract from chicken stomachs was found to permeate those walls, carrying with it into the worm's digestive system the spray bacteria. Such at least was the theory. The lab in Quebec is in a region frequently stripped by the spruce budworm, and it was there the bacterial attack was devised and staged. The outcome of test spraying was an anxious matter for the strategists. The arch enemy has fallen to his own appetite, to science, and the stomach of a chicken. A scout plane must direct the attack, for initial success over a small area has led to the spraying of first a thousand then 10,000 acres. below, the fallout is measured and distribution recorded on charts of the area. Necessary data to better the technique and bring the budworm population down to acceptable proportions.
the forest roof has been breached here by a freak of snow melting then freezing bringing down parent trees and emitting sunlight a dramatic instance of aliens springing up to grab the sunlight before a second generation could get itself established balsam fir here has formed an impenetrable understory below a valuable stand of pine withholding sunlight from the forest floor forestalling regeneration of the initial stock Trays of fir branches in the Petawawa fire lab duplicate the forest situation. Pine needles are the tinder in the lab as in the forest, where fire is considered the unqualified disaster. But if fire could be controlled by our better knowledge of temperatures, drafts, fuels and retardants, if it could be controlled, it could be prescribed. This was a prescribed fire. The singed understory of intruders will die. The parent trees were singed, but they will survive and their seed will fall on sunlit ground. The disastrous nature of fire, even, has its other side. Some scars remain, but regeneration has been achieved and the future projected. The future that, whatever its nature, will only be found on the other side of the forest. Ah.